Hey everyone, welcome to the Active Towns channel. I'm John Summerman and uh, today is Friday, May 20th, uh, bike to work day, or as I like to call it, uh, bike everywhere day. <laughs> and I'm heading uh, downtown to check out all the action. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be fun. And uh, I see lots of people riding everywhere, including to school. <laughs> all right, let's have some fun. Starbucks, thank you so much. Yay! Uh, what's your official title, Susan? Uh, the district manager of downtown Austin. It was Starbucks Coffee. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for doing yeah. this. Come have a cup of coffee. Yeah, I'm going to. Our all right, so you were just saying that, you know, it, riding to work is so important and fun. Uh, it is. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, when when I got my job here in Austin, you know, it was really important that I got to ride to work. Um, and so my girlfriend and I, when we were looking for a place to live, mm -hmm. you know, had set a buffer that I, I could ride my bike and make sure it had a good path to, to get there. Right, and then yeah. And it pays off every day. Yeah. Every day. Yeah. What are, and when you say it pays off every day, how does it pay off? What are some of the benefits? When you get to work, I feel better. Mm -hmm. You know, when I get home, I feel better no matter how the day went, you know, at one place or the other. Uh, yeah. That ride kind of wipes it all away. And you can really tell on the days that you don't ride your bike. Right. When it's, uh, you know, inclement weather or whatever that you, you don't feel as good as right. you normally do. I like to say that, you know, it's it's not about, this day is not about, you know, bike to work day as much as it is. Let's, you know, encourage people to consider biking everywhere for all of our different trips and, and reinforcing that and, and helping normalize this, you know, helping normalize this activity of being able to jump on a bike for a utilitarian trip. Um, and the whole reason this day came about was to try to encourage new people to do it and embrace and, and sort of help support new people in doing this. What do you think would help get more people to consider this? That's a good question. Because oftentimes driving is just a habit, you know, we just get used to it. Yeah, that's, that's true, that's true. I think that when, I like days like this where I see people out having fun with their right. bicycles. When I see people in groups smiling and having a good time, then that I think draws attention. Yeah. You know, and days like this are perfect for that. Yeah. Good stuff. I appreciate it. What's your name? Gary. Gary. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hey, good morning. Yeah, this is the place. This is the place. <laughs> Fantastic. Hey, hey, how's it going, buddy? Just everything else goes Yeah. <laughs> Woohoo! All right. There's our group. <laughs> and he's hard at work. How's it going, buddy? Good, man. How are you? Oh, fantastic. What do we got going on here? Uh, fresh squeezed orange juice and homemade Texas waffles. Te Texas waffles? Yeah. Fantastic. That is great. Oh, wow. Can I get a shot of that Texas waffle? Um, of Ooh, course. Look at should that. I, should I get the nice. syrup on Oh, yeah. Get the syrup on oh, Yeah. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. Woo. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> That's great. Thank you. Why are you all out here? Um, we just like biking. We were working out yep. this morning uh, at November Project, which okay. is a free fitness uh, community that we oh, both fantastic. run. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then we we're like, we'll bike over and check out all the stops. So, fantastic. Tell yeah. me more about the free fitness community. So, you want to do it? yeah. There you go. It's this. It's called November Project. Yeah. We're, I think, in 60 something cities around the world. Um, mm -hmm. And it's all free fitness. Okay. A lot of like community. We do kind of like, 
some running, but mostly like body weight exercises. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so we're both the co-leaders of okay. it. Yeah. Um, and we meet every week, Wednesday and Friday, 6 a.m. Every single week, rain or shine. Wow, um, that's so cool. How yeah. long have you been doing this? Uh, personally, I've been doing it for about four years, but one year okay. leading it. And okay. then you've been I've been coming since 2014. I used to live in Washington, D.C., so okay. I did a chapter there. And that's how I met all my friends in Austin through uh, the Austin yeah. chapter. So. I love it. I love it. Introduce yourself uh, and uh, tell us what we're doing here today. Uh, hi, I'm Russell, uh, the owner of Cycle East Bike Shop. And uh, we're here for Bike to Work Day. Uh, we've got some fresh squeezed orange juice and uh, homemade Texas waffles, a Cycle East tradition. Fantastic, yeah. fantastic. And we were just talking about the fact that this is the first time since 2019 mm -hmm. that this event has been held. Yeah, it's nice to have everybody back. It's nice to have everybody back. And, and now, I like to call this Bike Everywhere Day. Uh, yes. <laughs> because the whole work thing is a little strange for many people. It's true. I mean, work has definitely changed. Um, I, I, the only thing we haven't seen this year is people trying to hit every single stop. Right. So maybe next year uh, we'll have a we'll have an, a, a Bike to Work Day alley cat like we have had in the past. Ah, cool. uh, it's the only thing that's missing from this Bike to Work Day so far. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, it is nice to have everybody back. Even if they're not riding to work, sometimes they're riding back to their house for work, but that's okay too. Right. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's me. I mean, I work for a moment, yeah. so I'm, I'm out here to do this. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Great. Hey, thank you yeah. so much for your support. You're welcome. Yeah. Really appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yeah. Bye, guys. Hey, John, John. <laughs>
so many people were saying, well, it was a nice bowl, but that doesn't happen in Texas because it's hot in Texas. And it's hilly in central Texas. That's just not going to happen here. You know, my awakening, as I've talked to Hill about many times, is I, I took a trip uh, about that same time period, early 2016, I think it was, with the then Secretary of Transportation, Fox, uh, and with a group of other mayors, including our current Secretary of Transportation, Secretary Pete. And we went to some Northern European capitals to see just how many people were riding bicycles in the network. And not just people going to and from work, but, but families, kids going to and from school, parents taking their kids to and from school, people that were shopping, people that were doing everything that they had to do in their lives from a mobility perspective almost, and they were doing it on bicycles. To be in Netherlands, to the downtown parking garage, which has no cars, but just bicycles. It has like 26,000 bicycles in the downtown parking garage. Uh, you know, it was an amazing thing to see. And, and, and I, you know, obviously we're in, in Northern European capitals. So we didn't, you know, the question to them wasn't, how do you, how do you ride bicycles in the really hot summertime when it's hot and it's humid? We didn't have to ask that question because they had pictures of the, of the traffic in absolute blizzards in those capitals and everybody just wearing like really warm coats and still on their bicycles and the traffic continuing unabated. But what it really taught me were the things that Hill and others were saying at the time, which was people aren't going to ride bicycles until you have a network where the bicycle paths and 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 paths and, and routes go everywhere. You know, it's like being one of the first five people to have a telephone, right? You, you kind of get tired calling the other four people and it doesn't seem to be particularly worthwhile because you really can't call anybody until everybody has a phone. Then we're all carrying around in our pockets. Bicycle networks are the same way. They actually have to start where you are and end where you want to go. And they have to be safe, and they have to be convenient, and they have to provide real choices. But if you do that, then people will get on their bicycles because it's it's a wonderful way to travel, and people will do it once you build out that once you build out that network. So we went to the voters and we said, you know, let's take this aspirational goal, let's turn it into something that's actually real. And a lot of people on the plaza today were part of that first bond election that we really pushed in 2016. It started late. Remember, we didn't we didn't even we didn't even decide we were going to do it until May, until late May. We didn't have a number until June, actually July, but we got closer in June. But the scale was set in June. We had a mobility bond that was $720 million, which at that point was huge because we had never done that much. Over the preceding 20 years, cumulatively, we had done $630 million. 20 years, cumulatively, we had done 630, and we were looking at doing over a half a billion dollars on routes that already exist in our community that people drive on to make those routes function better and to put protected bike lanes on those routes. We weren't sure what the voters would do going to a $720 million bond, but our theme at the time was go big or go home. I mean, let's do it right. And the community responded to that. And what we learned at that moment was a community facing a choice for something that they did not believe was going to result in transformational change was not exciting. And people really didn't get it show up? Why should they? But if you challenge the community to change the face of the city, then the community would join. And they did, and that won overwhelmingly. We came back in 2018 with a bond. We came back in 2020, not only with Project Connect, but with a half a million dollars just on active transportation. This goal of over 400 mile network was set in 2014 aspirations. You know how many miles we had going into 2017? 20. 20 miles of the 
400 mile network, which I don't want to belittle because it was a start and the aspiration of all was just two years old. But a community engaged to actually get the work done, a lot of the people here pushing to get the work done. We are over 50% completed right now. We have over 200 miles completed in that bicycle network. Give yourselves a hand. Not only that, but when those aspirational goals were set, and we were trying to figure out when it would be that we would actually had it. We allowed ourselves to think that we would get this done early in the 2030s. But we will have completed our all ages, all abilities network sometime in 2025. And that is an incredibly exciting prospect for a city that needs to get to a 50-50 vote split if we're going to meet our responsibility to the rest of the world on climate change. I want to just say congratulations to the people that are here. Thank you to the people that are here. Thank you to Rob Spiller, who's been director here for 14 years, and to Gina, and to Spencer. An incredibly appreciative city council to everyone that has done just so much. Hey, thank you so much for watching. Uh, that's it. That's all for Bike to Work Day, uh, Bike Everywhere Day 2022. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Well, this is John signing off by wishing you much activity, health, and happiness. Cheers.